Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from the Felix Auger Aliasim serve to help improve your serve. Now, this video is courtesy of Liam Appalato over at Court Level Tennis. Make sure you subscribe to his awesome channel. I've put his link in the description below. I love Felix's serve, and the first thing I want to show you is at the beginning, we can not see his chest, but notice as he tosses... Right here, I mean, we have a full view of his front side. So he has turned basically his back to his opponent. He, this is called coiling. You're turning away and you want your upper body turned more than your lower body. And you can see that he's actually doing that. When you do this, you store up energy and then you can unleash this energy into the serve. And we can notice that here. So as he's contacting the ball, now we can't see his front again. Now we're looking at his back. So when you go out and film yourself, and you should be filming yourself all the time so you can review your footage and compare it to what you're learning in these videos, is make sure that on the, your serve, you are turning your back to your opponent, then facing back toward them. And at contact, you don't want to be facing directly toward your target. You do, if you're right-handed, want to be facing to the right of your target at contact, no matter what serve you're hitting, but you have to make sure that you are coiling to maximize the amount of racket speed you can get. The next idea, I want you to notice that his racket never points at the back fence. So at the beginning of his serve, you know, a lot of recreational players, they go down across their feet and the tip of their racket points at the back fence, like meaning the tip of the racket here is pointing there. When he serves, he never points the tip of the racket back. The reason that's a good thing, or to the back fence, the reason that's a good thing is it helps him to not go into the waiter's tray, palm up position. All he does, and this is kind of like a three quarters, more abbreviated type of motion where he's not going across his feet like Fetter. He just brings the racket more up directly. What I like about this is when he does this, he never has his strings pointing up. Players who go across their feet recreational players, I'm, I'm saying, tend to have their racket then laid wide open with their strings facing the sky. His racket is closed ever so slightly with his strings pointing, let's say, kind of like down to the ground right here. So when you film yourself, see if you can avoid pointing the tip of the racket at the back fence and keep your racket strings facing ever so slightly down. That can help eliminate the waiter's tray position, which really hurts your ability to create racket speed. Now, the next thing actually is this position right here. I want you to notice if I draw a line across the top of his head, so he has bent his knees and that line is now showing us when he is at his lowest knee bend point. It's just awesome, this, this knee bend that he's got. It's so good. This is, you know, he not only is he um, going down with his knees, this is when he's also coiling the body, remember. There's so much energy stored. He's even got his left hip slightly in front of the baseline. There's just so much potential energy here. I absolutely love what's about to happen. It's going to be a huge explosion. I love it. So from this position, it's vital that you are in your deepest knee bend in your trophy position. What you do not want to happen is for the racket to begin dropping in, in you know, the racket drop. You don't want that to happen before the legs drive up. You want them to happen simultaneously. So I draw that straight line again across the top of his head. Watch how he begins exploding up, and that's what creates the racket drop. So when you are using the right motion on your serve, when you start timing the knee bend correctly and explosion, that you are exploding up from your trophy position. That when you are in this position, you have the deepest knee bend and then you explode up from there. It really accentuates the drop and can help give you more miles per hour as it stretches your shoulder joint and it's kind of like a slingshot, maybe not a slingshot, a catapult. And then you get this huge stretch. I mean, this is amazing how his elbow is much higher than his hand. This is a lot of flexibility right here that's going on. And then boom, he just crushes the serve. So if you want to maximize the service motion that you're currently using, making sure, you know, you want to make sure that you've got a good service motion, start using your leg drive at the right time. And the leg drive should begin when you are in the trophy position, meaning where the racket is slightly closed, the tip of the racket's pointing up. That accentuates the racket drop and definitely gives you more miles per hour. Now, I want to mention one thing here. 
Notice when he's in the trophy position that his left hand is higher than the tip of the racket. Shoulders tilted. The right elbow is slightly below the right shoulder. I absolutely love this position. You watch most recreational players. They've already begun dropping their tossing arm because they drop typically too early. So keep your tossing arm up a really long time. Here's why. You want the racket and the tossing arm to go down together. So what's cool is when the body is going up, that's when the racket and tossing arm drop. They go opposite directions. Here the body is down and the racket and arm are up, the, the tossing arm. Now they go opposite directions. This is part of the throwing motion. And when he drops his arm, he's going to drop it and then tuck it in against his body. Watch his tossing arm. He drops it and then he pulls it back in against his body. You can see that little move right there. Watch his tossing arm go like this. Watch his arm go down, or, and then he bends his elbow and he starts to tuck it. That's a nice reactive break that helps slow his body down and accelerate the racket. Two more things I'm going to show you. First is of, the, of those two, I want you to notice at this point right here, it actually looks like he's going to hit the back of the strings against the ball. When you come around to hit the ball, it is in your best interest to have your racket ever so slightly closed at this point because the amount of pronation that is going to have to occur in order for your racket to square up against the back of the ball, that pronation is kind of like um, uncorking a, a, a champagne bottle that you've, sh you've been shaking for you know a minute and all of a sudden you uncork it and it's this explosion of power. So you want to come around with your strings pointing down slightly, almost like you feel like you're going to use the back of your strings to go up to the ball. Then you're going to rotate the racket. Now, the looseness of your arm should means that the racket should continue rotating, and we can see that. His strings here are facing off to the right, where prior to hitting, you can see his strings are facing off to the left, and even before that, his strings were pointing down. The amount of looseness and relaxation and allowing the pronation to occur immense racket speed. If you've ever hurt your hand and like slammed it in a drawer and you go, ow, and you kind of shake your hand because you hurt it, that's pronation. That's moving the hand fast. That snap of the forearm at the top of the swing is what produces all that power where everything he did leading up to that then culminates in that pronation as he's hitting. And the last thing I want you to notice, notice that he's inside the court when he lands. This is important. I want you going forward into the court, leaning in and ending up in the court. You can see his back leg kicks up. That's for balance because he's leaning in. That's why that happens. You know, he's, just, he's leaning forward with his upper body. So he's got to make sure that his back leg kicks up just for balance. So I want you to go out and film yourself. I want you to see if you have these ideas. If you're coiling your body, turning your body toward the camera that's behind you. Make sure that you are not pointing the tip of the racket at the camera, but try to just keep the tip of the racket more if you're right-handed, pointing to the right as you get into the trophy position with your strings pointing down. See if in the trophy position, you have your knees super bent with your racket tip up, string slightly closed. You can see his left hand is still up in the air. Absolutely love this. This is when he's going to explode up. Both arms come down at the same time, or I should say the racket and the tossing arm come down at the same time. That's when the explosion occurs, when he's in the trophy position. Make sure that you feel like you're going to actually hit the ball with the back of the strings and then pronate with your strings going from facing left to right if you're right-handed, tucking the tossing arm in against the body to help slow the body's rotation, and then end up inside the baseline just to make sure that you got your momentum forward and you were leaning into the serve. You work on this service motion. There is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.